Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called Finance Current Affairs. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try and discuss them with the help of different questions. So before moving on to question number one, if you are there for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon so that whenever a new video comes up, you can be notified about the same. You can also join our telegram group. The free PDFs of these sessions will be available on that very group. The link is in the description below. Moving on to first question then, it says National Payments Corporation of India that is the NPCI has launched NPCI tokenization system to support the tokenization of which cards. Okay, the launch comes after RBI mandated tokenization of cards from 1st Jan 2022. So if you remember few days back I took one session where I told you about this very mandate of RBI where the different card issuers and card networks are only allowed to save the customer card details. Other merchant aggregators cannot save these details. This was a mandate that came up in order to ensure more security, more uh, safety of the customer's data. Okay, so tokenize, we discussed about tokenization over there. Now, because 1st January was the timeline from which the uh, mandate begins, so uh, different payment networks have started opting for this tokenization system. So, NPCI has launched the tokenization system for a certain type of card. So, we have to identify which cards are they talking about over here. The answer to this question is option C, Rupee cards. Okay, so let's see what is this tokenization and what's the latest news around it. So, if I talk about tokenization, the card tokenization refers to the process that replaces the details of card like its number, CVV, for making transactions with an encrypted algorithmatically generated token. So we have the card details, we have the card number, we have the CVV which is there at the back of the card. So usually when we are transacting online, when we are buying the things online, maybe we are using Amazon, Big Basket, Grow First, Make My Trip, we usually make the payments using the cards. Okay, so our card data gets saved over there. But RBI said that uh, the tokenization needs to be opted which means that this card number this cvv will be converted into some kind of a code language okay that is known as a token converting the data into an encrypted form it's a token and tokenization is required the conversion of the data into a tokenized form is required in order to make sure that the customer data the sensitive customer data remains secure no one can basically misuse it or conduct cyber frauds through it okay so that's the tokenization uh, which was mandated by rbi which had to be followed from first and 2022 onwards so in line with this now the rupee cards uh, for rupee cards this tokenization system is being introduced and it is done in collaboration with NPCI. The National Payments Corporation of uh, India has launched this NPCI tokenization system using which the rupee card details will be tokenized. How it will work, why this step has been taken, let's discuss that as well. So one reason why NPCI has launched this system for your rupee cards is because RBI mandated to follow that. So because of RBI mandate, now these uh, pay, these card issuers and card networks are actually looking forward to implement that mandate. Secondly, it is a um, step to ensure the safety of customers. So from that point of view, to keep the information secure, now the system is being implemented. Okay, it will also ensure a seamless shopping experience for customers. Obviously, it will reduce the uh, friction in the payment process and provide a faster checkout experience. Now, you might be thinking that now if we are making a say transaction, our card details get saved. Next time again, when we come and make a transaction, we will again have to enter the details. No, you have details enter the details again. Although now these are the aggregators or aggregators or the merchants are ये आपका डेटा सेव नहीं कर पाएंगे लेकिन जो ये टोकनाइजेशन सिस्टम एनपीसीआई क्रिएट कर रही है इससे आपके कार्ड इश्यूअर या कार्ड पेमेंट नेटवर्क्स जो है वहां पे डेटा सेव हो पाएगा 
एंड एक टोकनाइज नंबर मिल जाएगा इन मर्चेंट्स को इन बिजनेसेस को जिसकी रेफरेंस से आपकी डेटा कस्टमर की डेटा सेव रहेगी लेकिन वो मिस नहीं हो पाएगी ओके सो द चेकआउट एक्सपीरियंस विल बी सीमलेस इट्स नॉट दैट द कस्टमर हैज टू एंटर द डेटा अगेन एंड अगेन बट फॉर सेफ्टी दिस इंफॉर्मेशन रादर देन बींग सेव्ड विद योर मर्चेंट्स विद योर बिजनेसेस इट विल बी सेव्ड विद द कार्ड इशूअर और द पेमेंट नेटवर्क ओनली कार्ड इशूअर्स आर योर बैंक्स हुआ इशूइंग द कार्ड्स एंड पेमेंट नेटवर्क इंक्लूड योर रूपे वीजा मास्टर कार्ड ऑल दीज ओके सो हाउ द टोकनाइजेशन इज गोइंग टू वर्क लेट्स डिस्कस दैट NTS will support tokenization of rupee as an alternate to storing card details with the merchants so what is happening over here the data the card data will not be stored with the merchants when where it will be stored and how it, there will be a seamless experience for the customers let's discuss that based on a set of guidelines sensitive customer information will be stored in an encrypted token to help secure transactions so first of all the customer information will be converted into the code language which we call token sabse pehle customer ka jo card detail hai card number hai cvv hai wo sab coded ho jayega usko hum kehte hain token so tokenization is being done these tokens then allow payments to be processed without disclosing customer details or allowing payment intermediaries to store customer data so your payment uh, your, all your merchants your payment aggregators they will not have the access to this data they will just know that okay this is the token number of this customer and we have to process his transaction so the data will be fetched from your uh, card issuer or payment network where it is stored the acquiring banks the aggregators the merchants they can get themselves certified with npci as token requesters and save the token reference number against card number saved so what they are saying they are saying that these acquiring banks merchants aggregators the ones who are facilitating your payments or the merchants like amazon grofers they will not be able to save your data they will have to certify themselves from npci as a token requester so they will uh, be issued a token reference number which relates to some customer and that customer's card details are stored with the card issuer or the payment network and not with the merchant or aggregator so yahan kya ho raha hai ye aggregators ya merchants jo hai ne npci se khud ko certify karana hoga as a token requester so jab bhi kisi customer ki koi bhi transaction process honi hai usne ek bar card details di to wo card details एग्रीगेटर या मर्चेंट के पास नहीं स्टोर होगी वो आपके कार्ड इशूअर या पेमेंट नेटवर्क के पास स्टोर हो जाएंगी और जब भी वो दोबारा ट्रांजैक्शन करेगा देन उसको एक एग्रीगेटर या मर्चेंट साइट को एक टोकन रेफरेंस नंबर मिला होगा जो उस कस्टमर से रिलेटेड होगा तो वो उस टोकन रेफरेंस नंबर के थ्रू कस्टमर की डिटेल्स अपने आप वहाँ आ जाएंगी विदाउट द नीड टू बी स्टोर एंड ऐसा सिस्टम क्रिएट किया जाएगा कि बिना डेटा स्टोर किए जस्ट थ्रू द रेफरेंस नंबर कस्टमर की कार्ड डिटेल्स और सी के थ्रू ट्रांजैक्शन प्रोसेस हो जाए तो कस्टमर को कार्ड डिटेल्स फिर से नहीं डालनी पड़ेगी और वो डिटेल्स मर्चेंट या एग्रीगेटर के साथ शेयर भी नहीं होगी उनके साथ सिर्फ टोकन रेफरेंस नंबर शेयर होगा जो कि लिंक्ड है आपकी कार्ड डिटेल्स से जो आपके पेमेंट नेटवर्क या कार्ड इशूअर के पास है All these businesses can maintain their rupee customer base utilizing the token reference on file for future transactions initiated by the respective rupee consumers. So rupee card details जो है वो card उनकी accordingly tokenization हुआ हुआ है वो data saved है उन sources के साथ जिन्हें allow किया गया है Okay, the data is saved with those sources who are allowed as per RBI. Like in this case, the payment issuer, the card issuers, and the payment networks others cannot store and use that data moving ahead now who others have launched this service okay for rupee the npci has come up with a system okay a uh, few weeks back visa also launched its card on file so there is a fintech firm just pay uh, it in collaboration with it in partnership with it visa also launched the card on file tokenization for itself and now it is operation it will be available across all your e-commerce platforms like grofers big basket make my trip to in platforms mein aapka visa card ke through aap transactions kar sakte ho ye particular merchant website aapka data store nahi karenge but visa card details aapki card issuer ya network payment network ke paas saved rahengi token number inko mil jayega grofers big basket wagaira ko jiske through wo कार्ड डिटेल्स फेच करके ट्रांजैक्शन को प्रोसेस कर पाएंगे और आई होप द कॉन्सेप्ट इज क्लियर नाउ 
moving to second question which is related to this very new piece only we have to identify the incorrect statement on the working of npci tokenization system so we just discussed the working the first statement says based on a set of guidelines mandated by rbi sensitive information is stored in an encrypted token form for securing the transactions this is correct tokens allow payments to be processed without disclosing customer details uh, or the or allowing payment intermediaries to store customer data that can breach security and privacy this is also correct last one says that acquiring banks aggregators merchants can get get themselves certified to store customer details no they can get themselves certified to be the token requesters but they cannot save the details so only this is incorrect we had to identify the incorrect one that's why answer is option b moving to second question uh, next question the third question and uh, next topic of the day A member country's IMF quota determines its maximum financial commitment to the IMF, its voting power, and the bearing on its access to the IMF financing. What you have to do over here, you have to identify what is India's present quota and voting right. So let's see what is what do you mean by an IMF quota? What is IMF? What is the current news going around? And then we'll come back and answer this question. All right. So recently, there was an annual meeting of the World Bank Group and the IMF, and in that very meeting, the experts have suggested to review the role of IMF. So World Bank Group is basically a partnership of certain big institutions, certain five institutions come up together, make this World Bank Group, and they work towards reducing the poverty or helping the developing countries to prosper. and if i talk about the imf it's also an organization where we have membership of around 190 countries and this organization works towards the monetary co cooperation between the countries ensuring the financial stability it ensures the generation of employment promotes the international trade ensures the growth and reduces the poverty around the world for helping out these member nations so in this very meeting of both of these institutions the experts have suggested that we need to review the role of imf hame imf ka role review karna hai kuch reforms lane hai kuch changes lane honge kya proposed reforms hai kyu unhe lana hai let's discuss that so the first proposed reform relates to the quota system so let's first discuss what do you mean by imf quota and then we will discuss these proposed reforms and the reasons behind them so imf quota system was created to raise funds for the loans now imf is a international organization it provides the support to the countries wherever they are in need it provides loans so for that it itself needs money ab aapne kisi ko loan bank ne kisi ko loan dena hai to uske liye bank ke paas bhi to koi paise ka zariya hona chahiye banks hamari deposit use karte hain logo ko loans dene mein okay just like banks use our money the depositors money to further lend the loans similarly imf is granting the loans to different countries it needs a source for funding so imf quota provides that it acts as that source IMF quota basically means a contribution to be made on end of each country which wants a membership with IMF like you uh, if you want a membership for any club you have to pay certain amount kisi bhi club ki membership leni hai kisi bhi type ki cheez ke liye aapko membership leni hai aapko kuch subscription fees deni hoti hai to agar aapko IMF ki membership leni hai to unko bhi aapko kuch subscription fee deni padegi wo hota wo decide karta hai aapka IMF quota aapke end se kitna contribution jayega जिस बेसिस पे आपको आईएमएफ में वोटिंग राइट right मिलेगा आपको ये चांस मिलेगा कि आप आईएमएफ से लोन्स ले सको कितना ले सकोगे वो सब आपके कोटा पे डिपेंड करता है और आपको कितना कोटा मिलेगा आईएमएफ में वो कई और फैक्टर्स पे डिपेंड करता है फर्दर ओके सो आई एम एफ कोटा इज बेसिकली द सब्सक्रिप्शन फी दिच यू हैव टू पे टू आई एम एफ द कंट्रीब्यूशन ऑन योर एंड टू गेट रजिस्टर्ड विद आई एम एफ बेस्ड ऑन दैट यू विल बी गिवन अ वोटिंग राइट इन आई एम एफ यू विल बी गिवन अ चांस टू बोरो मनी फ्रॉम आई एम एफ इन टाइम्स ऑफ नीड सो एम मेम्बर्स कोटा डिटरमाइंस द फाइनेंशियल कमिटमेंट टू दई एम एफ इट्स वोटिंग पार एंड हैज अ बियरिंग ऑन दी आई एम एफ फाइनेंस वेन एवर अ कंट्री जॉइंस दी आई एम एफ इट इज असाइड अ कोटा okay so it's basically a contribution that reflects country's relative size in global economy aapka quota decide karega ki aap dusri countries ke respect mein kahan stand karte ho un countries ki kitni voting power hai kitni capacity hai ki wo imf se loan le sake aur aapki kitni hai all right each member's quota determines the voting power as well as its borrowing capacity 
this makes wealthy countries have more say in making and revision of rules so if you have a look at the imf quota your european countries then us they have a major quota with imf but if we talk about india or other emerging economies they have very very less quota that means that more decision making power is there with us european countries jo ye badi badi wealthy countries hai inke paas bahut zyada quota hai inhone kafi contribution kiya aur imf pe voting right hasil kiya hua hai jis जैसे मेजर डिसीजंस जो है ये आपकी यूरोपियन कंट्रीज और यूएस ही लेते हैं हमारी वोटिंग पावर हमारे वोटिंग राइट्स हमारी बोरोइंग कैपेसिटी हमारा से इन आईएमएफ डिसीजंस इज वेरी लेस बिकॉज ऑफ द लेस कोटा व्हिच वी हैव कोटास आर बेसिकली डिनोमिनेटेड इन एसडीआरस वेरियस टाइम्स वी हैव डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द स्पेशल ड्राइंग राइट्स ओके द quota which we get is by purchasing the sdrs from imf so it's a claim on the freely usable currencies and we have discussed that it is determined on the basis of the basket of currencies its value is this, uh, de- uh, derived on the basis of certain basket of currencies so you have to buy the sdrs and uh, this way you are you are actually getting the quota with imf so this quota is decided on various factors uh what is your country's gdp how much output you are generating how open is your economy how much of the international reserves are you maintaining what's the extent of variability in your economy all these things help decide your quota with the imf so if we talk about india it has just 2.75 uh, 2.75% of quota and this gives india only 2.63% rights with imf so india ka quota or voting rights hai 2.75 and 2.63% if you compare this with us us has around 16 to 17 point some percent of your quota and your voting power okay so now coming back to what's the proposed reform the proposed reform is to reform the quota system in order to in uh, reflect the changed economic reality especially with regards to increasing capabilities of developing nations like brics countries now brics countries are contributing a lot they are generating good amount of output they are emerging economies but despite of that their say with imf their quota with imf is really very less vis-a-vis us or other european countries so there is a need to reform this quota system okay we need to make sure that the economies which are doing well contribute good to the output are emerging economies their quota should also increase unko bhi kuch aur extra quota milna chahiye bahut kam quota hai emerging nations ke liye ya brics countries ke liye jo kafi acha output de rahi hai zyada se zyada power european countries aur us ke paas hi rukki hui hai major unhi ka stake hai wahan pe so hame apna quota system jo imf ka hai usko reform karne ki zarurat hai then we have the management reforms so it it seems like there is an informal arrangement that head of imf will be european and world banks you american so it's there is a need to reconsider this hamesha kya hota hai imf ka jo bhi head hai wo koi european person hota hai aur world bank ka hamesha koi american so sara decision making power europe aur america ke paas hi hai wo jo major decision lenge wo hi sab countries ko ultimately follow karna padta hai so there is a need to change the management to give a, a chance to others as well to improve their quota to increase their voting power to increase their say then we need to restructure the article 4 consultations as well so imf conducts various discussions with the members okay bilateral discussions hote hain imf ke member countries ke sath har saal hota hai ye aur jo bhi decisions country ke related liye jate hain jo bhi information milti hai usko fir ek report ke form mein banaya jata hai that's an article 4 consultation okay i am a for discussions with the members every year and then a report is prepared for that member nation and this is the article 4 consultation which is there in that report we need to restructure it this is the third reform which has been proposed now why these reforms are proposed as i have just discussed emerging economies are doing really very well they are generating a lot of output lot of gdp so there is a need to review the quota system to make sure that their say also increases in overall imf decisions ओके इमर्जिंग मार्केट्स अच्छा कर रही है तो उनका तब भी उनको इतना ज्यादा कोटा नहीं मिल रहा मतलब हमारे कोटा सिस्टम में कहीं प्रॉब्लम है देन वी हैव अनइक्वल रिप्रेजेंटेशन 
a higher amf quota means more voting power more borrowing permissions from imf okay but it is unfortunate that the formula is designed in such a way that us itself has 17.43% quota which is higher than the cumulative of several countries aap kai countries ka quota milaoge tab bhi us se kam hai unka quota major power us ke paas hai g7 group if we talk about the g7 nations about which i discussed in last session also uh they have a fort, more than 40% of the quota and if we talk about countries like india russia they have just 2.5% quota so we see some countries are over represented okay and some emerging nations which are, it should have more quota they are not given this quota so the the unequal representation is one of the reasons why we need to review this very reform we, we need to review the imf working then is changing dynamics so with rapidly evolving global arrangements of developing developed nations it is necessary to bring about reform with the imf otherwise it will be pushed to irrelevance ab developed developing economies ke bheet itne arrangements ho rahe hain saath mein wo milke kitne agreements kar rahe hain they are working together so agar imf apne purane system mein hi stuck rahega improvement nahi laega to gradually hame iska uh, working irrelevant lagne lagegi okay then is data integrity there is a need to maintain data integrity amid the world bank discontinuing ease of doing business reports so uh, recently i told you that the doing ease of doing business report manipulated the data showed wrong data because of which the world bank decided to discontinue this so this shows that there is lack of data integrity we need to improve on that area so some reforms need to be brought in for imf as well then we need to restructure article 4 because we need to make sure that more new technologies are used more public data is utilized to basically provide more correct better reliable information article 4 consultation is the most powerful instrument and it needs to be restructured to make it more useful or technology ka use karke or data ka use karke aap jab ye reports banaoge wo zyada useful hoge so these are the reasons why they have suggested reviewing all of this okay so coming back to our question so we had to identify the quota for india so answer is option e moving to last question related to this topic only recently in the backdrop of 2021 annual meetings of world bank group and imf leading experts have suggested the need to review the role of imf which of the following following correctly states the need to review these reforms so unequal representation was one reason emerging markets are increasing their output but their share is not increasing right so this is also one of the reasons then there are cyber security and privacy issues ye koi major reason nahi hai imf reform ka so this is not a, a correct one first and second are correct answer is option c This was all for today's session I hope it was useful for you with this I would like to end up the session thank you so much